Okay, everybody, we're here at the Holman Hill Tank, Reservoir Hill, a reservoir speaking of water. And uh, we're here, tell us your name. Uh, I'm Ryan Shambly. I'm with uh, Trestles out of Nashville, an environmental firm. I'm an engineer intern. Tell us what you do. Uh, I'm the on-site representative for FPU. Uh, I stay on site, let the engineer and the owner know the progress of the tank. and. Uh, uh, just kind of interface between the owner and the engineer and the uh, contractor as they uh, construct uh, the tank um, and uh, as well as uh, to sign off on different requests that the uh, in, uh, contractor has. So you've seen this tank, uh, you've seen a tank here that mm -hmm. went away, it's All no right. longer here. All right. And we've seen, you've seen the building, you've been with us the whole time, the building of this entire new tank here. All right. Tell us what's going on here today. Uh, today they're uh, gonna be uh, installing a solar powered mixer. And basically this is gonna be a way to keep the water from setting. It's gonna pull water from the bottom of the tank, pull it up through uh, a pipe that's attached to the mixer and this is all solar powered. It'll run 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. And it'll just pull that water up from the bottom and circulate it out the top of the tank uh, on the top and just keep the water moving. Um, and it should, I said, work for 365 days a year without any real power usage from, from FPU. All right. Let's go up the tank and find out what it, see what it looks like. Uh, this is basically the control unit for the solar B mixing system. This will charge the battery to the solar panel. And then on board is a control unit which sends the signal to the motor and tells the motor how fast to rotate, when to rotate. And uh, it also, the motor sends back signals to this unit to let it know that everything's working properly. And so at all times, FPU can see what the status is. Uh, this is Solar B. They are from North Dakota, and they're now installing the mixing system. Uh, they're now going to spray it down with a chlorine solution to disinfect and decontaminate before they put anything into the, the potable water. Um, this pipe will set on the bottom of the tank and then pull water up to the top and the mixer as it spins and turns will bring that water over the top and keep it mixed in the tank and fresh. Uh, when the solar bee is placed in the water, uh, these fans are, are actually flotation devices. And so when it is set down in the water, they will fan out and keep the water, the uh, mixture floating on top of the surface of the water whatever the height of the water is in the tank. So basically this thing floats on top of the water. Right. Well, we're looking at the solar panels here, but what's this stuff right here? Uh, it's kind of a kind of funny. They, after putting these up on a tank, they found out this was a perfect perch for birds, and they would come back, and the solar panel wouldn't be working because it was covered in what birds do. So uh, they found this little technique of putting a little spikes on top of the uh, solar panel, and it just deters birds from landing on it and uh, making a home. The uh, solar panel is connected to this control panel and what it enables will enable FPU to do is they can connect to it remotely and see the status of the mixer and it will give them basically uh, live feedback from the mixing system to let them know that it's working at the right uh, speed uh, and uh, 
that there's no problems. If there's ever, it'll actually have alarms and it'll send it directly to the FPU so that they know if there's a problem with the, the system. Uh, right now they're going to be installing the, the pipe, which will pull water uh, up to into the mixer and then uh, keep the water fresh and clean. Um, this is basically all one unit and so at any point after it goes in it will fan out and just float on the top and then the pipe will be held on the bottom. And uh, any time that there's any type of um, issues with the mixer that they need to do any maintenance or regular routine maintenance, um, it has connect a chain connected to the hatch. You can just pull it all over and pull it right out with no, without ever entering the tank. So the black things on the side is going to open up when we get it down in there, right? Correct. Um, those are actually are what uh, moves the motor to make to pull the water up through the top, and they also act as a flotation device for the whole for the entire unit. Uh, now they have the, the mixing system connected to the controller. Um, it'll be able to lower the entire unit into the water and then uh, it'll uh, steady itself and fan out and begin uh, be able to float into place. And uh, soon after they'll be able to uh, power up the unit and do a diagnostic. Have to worry about uh, hitting the sides or anything like that, or the, the ladder or anything inside there. Uh, actually, the there is a kind of a weight on the the pipe they placed in first, which holds the unit, the, the entire unit uh, in place where they where they want it. Um, it's kind of just keeps it on a tether, uh, sort of so keeps it, it on, sort of keeps it in the center. Right. Okay. Uh, right now they're bringing in a, a float which will hook on to uh, the power cables uh, that connect to the mixer and this keeps the power cables away from the unit so uh, cables whenever we get caught in the rotation of the blades.
So you're saying that steel ball floats on top of the water? y'all from? North Dakota. Okay. Do this all the time? Most of the time. <laughs> this kind of prop, this kind of work though? Yep. So it's holding the electronics up. Uh, right, it's holding the cable. Uh, it makes sure that uh, it stays away from the, the mixing unit so that uh, there's no no tangles or nothing. Uh, none of the power cables get struck that could cause any damage to the unit. Uh, they're now oh. lowering the entire unit you got it. into the tank, um, which when it begins to float, they'll be able to uh, disconnect the unit and uh, just let it float inside the tank and uh, move towards a uh, normal position. bringing in the, the battery which will be charged by the solar panel and uh, this will give the unit power 24 hours a day. Um, it's actually designed so that if you have long periods of overcast it'll tell the motor to slow down and not use as much power so it'll keep the battery charged. Tell us your name and uh, what is Solar Bee? Hello, my name is John. Uh, Solar Bee is the company I work for. Uh, it's also known as Medora Corporation. Basically what we do is we, um, we offer solutions for, uh, for water, um, like local municipalities that have water issues, whether it be THMs or um, chlorine stagnation, things like that, or stratification. Uh, what we did today was we put a, a 500 size unit in this tank. Um, the unit's called an SB500, that stands for Solar B500. Uh, what that does is it circulates the water inside the tank and it will affect up to 500 gallons per minute. Uh, direct flow is a little bit different, I don't know the technical details on that. But we have units that range from the 500, which is this one, all the way up to a 10,000, which we'll put in like really big reservoirs. The types of water that we go into, obviously this is a potable tank. Uh, we also go into fresh water, uh, lakes, estuaries, stormwater ponds, raw water, wastewater, and um, pretty much any water that needs circulating. We've got a few private lakes out there that have solar bees. Um, besides the solar bee, we have another product. Um, we have the grid bees, which instead of having the solar panels to power them, the grid bees are powered strictly on grid power. And uh, one of our grid bee units is a GS12. All of our solar bees, except for the GS12, are uh, the floating type. They're all gonna float on top of the body of water. The GS12 is actually a submersible one. That's one that basically a customer can just order and install themselves. Basically, they just drop it into a tank and then they can plug it in. Um, Basically, what we do in a nutshell is we just help to improve water quality, whether it be uh, help control harmful blue-green algae blooms or help keep chlorine in the potable water tank from stratifying and stagnating. So, that's Solar Bee. Tell me what we see right down below. This is the thing uh, that you just put in there, spread out. Tell me how it's going to work. Well, this is the uh, Solar Bee 500. Uh, basically, what we're, what we're looking at right now the unit has been completely installed. It's in the tank and it's currently running. 
Uh, basically what's happening is the impeller is spinning at approximately 80 revolutions per minute. Um, the whole idea with, uh, with uh, solar bee circulators is to create a current inside the tank that brings water from the bottom up to the top and distribu distributes it evenly over the surface. So basically what we're doing is we're grabbing water directly from the bottom. It's following the length of the hose up into the dish. Uh, it's being pulled up by the impeller, which is powered by a, a really low amperage motor. And then it's just being distributed over the surface. Right now the water's a little bit choppy. Um, until it's been established for a few days and it gets a good current going, the water will be a little bit choppy. But uh, basically it'll help keep the entire tank circulated. It'll keep the temperatures even. It'll increase the oxygen levels in the water. Um, it can uh, decrease the need for chlorine, and it can also decrease uh, THMs, which are uh, oxidative byproducts when chlorine interacts with organic solids. Okay, Ryan, well, enjoyed that. That's amazing. You got to see the whole process of the tank all the way down to the, to, uh, the uh, solar bee, which is pretty cool. One thing that we, uh, Eric and I saw inside the tank is how the level there works there. Eric can see, uh, uh, that's pretty cool. Explain to right. people at home how that works. Uh, right now, we, of course, we have an indicator right here that shows us the level. It's by uh, depth of the tank. The entire tank is 28 feet deep. And uh, so that'll give you right now, we've got about 18 feet, so we've got about 10 feet uh, without water in the top of the tank at the moment. Uh, right now, the uh, tank is just working hydraulically with uh, FPU system. Wow. Um, basically, we're at a, a high point and water comes to the high point and then is used, goes back out. Um, the next couple of weeks, we're gonna have uh, uh, electricians to do their part and uh, get the tank uh, connected. Uh, basically, FPU will be able to monitor the, the levels of the tank at all times. And uh, they have a, a pneumatic valve that's gonna be controlled by a compressor. And uh, um, FPU will be able to tell that valve to shut or close any time through a signal. And uh, with some modifications on our other tanks, they will have uh, basically control over the levels of the tank, filling and uh, usage. Now, Ryan, you're a local guy, so tell right. us how you got involved in uh, working with this project. All right, I graduated uh, from Lincoln County High School in 2002. Grew up in uh, Lincoln County. Uh, grew up uh, between Howell and Petersburg, and then I. Uh, uh, after graduation of high school, I went to college at Tennessee Tech and I uh, had my bachelor's in civil engineering. And uh, that's how I uh, ended up here. I um, uh, worked with uh, uh, the Posey Industrial Park inspection for uh, construction of it. And then I uh, started with Trestles with this job, uh, which is now out of Nashville. And uh, I work here and live here to Nashville every so often when uh, construction uh, kind of stops or there's any uh, spaces where I need to work going on. Well, we're wrapping up here at the tank. The tank's come a long way from we, where we saw it, right. and uh, we appreciate you being able to see it. Appreciate we got to see Solar B and, and all the processes of the tank. Good luck in your future. Right. Thank you for all you do, you. and uh, we appreciate you watching on Federal Public Utilities Channel 6.